When we file IFR flight plans, we know that we need to use a cruise altitude that follows the convention of even thousands of feet for westbound flights and odd thousands of feet for eastbound. Flying westbound then along Victor 298 here, we'd want an even thousand foot altitude like 12, 14, or 16,000. We also need to make sure we keep the minimum altitudes, so let's look at those. There are two figures above the airway identifier. The bottom number, 10,300 with the asterisk in front of it, is the minimum obstruction clearance altitude, MOCA. The top number, 11,000, is the minimum in route altitude, MEA. We want to file a route that stays at least as high as the MEA. If we're eastbound, an odd thousand like 11,000 would work, but westbound, the lowest we want to file is 12,000. This MEA happens to follow the convention of rounding IFR altitudes to the nearest thousand, but why doesn't the MOCA do so too? No matter which direction we're flying, we won't file 10,300, right? So why doesn't the MOCA just round to a thousand foot figure? Unlike in VFR flight, these IFR cruising altitudes aren't actually mandated. 91179 covers this. First, in controlled airspace, which is all airspace class A through E, it just says we maintain the altitude or flight level assigned by ATC. Next, for uncontrolled airspace, in other words just in class G, we see the odd and even thousand foot convention, but it doesn't show up in controlled airspace at all. The controllers are advised to assign cruising altitudes based on this convention, but again, everything can be superseded by a new ATC assignment. So what we file and are cleared for isn't going to necessarily determine what we fly the whole time. But why not just keep it simple and assign round thousands of the MOCA? It's because the way these altitudes are determined has nothing to do with filing conventions. The MOCA altitude is based on two requirements. First, that it provide at least 1,000 feet of obstacle clearance or 2,000 feet in mountainous terrain along the entire airway segment. So for here, this altitude will get us no closer to terrain than required, the entire distance between the Muddy Mountain and Boysen Reservoir VORs. Next, the altitude must provide adequate signal coverage for a VOR, but only within 22 miles of the station. Departing Muddy Mountain will be able to track outbound along it until we're 22 miles away when the signal might cut out. We continue on, but aren't able to track inbound along the Boysen Reservoir VOR until we're within 22 miles of that. We can't track the VORs the whole way, but we're keeping ourselves a safe distance above terrain. Okay, but still, when would we ever find ourselves flying such a strange altitude like 10,300? A scenario could be if we're cruising up at 12,000 as we filed, but we encounter icing or perhaps some unfavorable headwinds. We think if we get a bit lower, we can get better weather. How low can we go? Well, if we follow IFR cruising altitudes, we can't get below 12,000, right? The next lowest even thousand is 10,000, and that goes below the MOCA and too close to terrain but we can request to go down as low as the MEA or even the MOCA as long as we could still navigate the airway. We could do a request like, we'd like to descend to the MOCA 10,300 for icing avoidance. ATC, if they agree, will tell us to descend and maintain 10,300. Note that we can't just decide to go down that low without any kind of ATC authorization. That's in 91179. They'll likely want to also confirm that we can maintain our own navigation along the airway that low. If we couldn't, they might be able to provide a radar vector to us, but that would call up a different minimum, the minimum vectoring altitude, which isn't based on airway minimums and might be higher than what the MOCA gets us. So the point here is that you shouldn't feel hemmed in by the IFR cruising altitude conventions when you're in flight and need a new altitude. There could be something you could fly in between these 2,000 foot intervals that might work better for you and still meet all minimum IFR altitude requirements. Work with ATC, as weather avoidance under IFR is often a team sport. For more insights, head over to the Flight Insight website today at the link here and in the description.